The idea of our so-called Gumbel Transalps Rally was to allow pilots with little or no Volbiv experience to get over that first hurdle, plucking up courage to actually do it by joining up with others, well, at least for the beginning of the trip. We've been chatting about it for months, but with COVID, we had no idea whether it would actually happen. But once quarantine restrictions looked like they were going to be removed, I booked a flight to Nice for 19th of July and persuaded a few other mad fools to do the same. And so here we all are at the start of our adventure. Here we are on day one, or maybe this should be day zero. Nigel has very kindly driven us up to the Le Chauvet and we're all pitching our tents, having had a very nice pizza in town. So, a bit of old glamping at the moment, really. <laughs> Apart from the rocky ground. <laughs> Apart from the rocky ground. Morning all. Dawn of the first day. <laughs> Glorious. It's supposed to be windy today, but there's not a breath now. So, uh, cup of tea, check the forecasts, and see what's what. Morning, Chris. Morning. See you well? No. <laughs> Mind my cup there. <laughs> Various bits of camping equipment all just dried out. A bit of condensation for everyone last night. Look at that! Let's get up there! Loitering by the antenna, waiting for Chris to uh, catch up with us. Up at 2,100 meters. And Reese has pushed on to the Land Bruce Ridge. That's very pleasant. The forecast for the first couple of days was for strong winds, too strong to safely fly north. So we'd planned to push north a little bit up to the coat lock to see what it was like and then in all likelihood to go for a downwinder yeah, to the colder blend where Nigel would collect us from later. Heading to coat lock now. Nigel over there, Reese just behind. The others just waiting to get high. Six meters. Yeah, we're seeing a bit of northerly wind here, about 15k. Just gonna, yeah, just see what it's like a bit further. I'm at 3,200 meters, sitting on top of the coat long. Very little drift. Just waiting to see if anyone else can get up here.
So as you can see, I'm pushing north. There's only about 10 kilometers an hour of wind up high. I'm up at 3.2. It's pretty pleasant. I'm just oh, cruising along. A bit of lift. Let's let's just see if there's any lift here. Get a view of what people are doing. Really worth turning. Can't see anyone else, but they're following. Let's get up to this peak. Try and get high there. You can see all the others down on the ridge over there. They're not down, flying. Oh, I think we're gonna head over that way now. Head for Tromas. Pushing onto the Tromaz. I'll get high here and then I might head back and do some shepherding. See how they're getting on. So, a bit of a headwind just here. I think the wind is coming, well, from the, the west. So, I'm into wind, but once I get onto the that face, it'll be a lot better. And that's where the clouds are. This is Tim, I'm at 2,500 meters, just on the Tromaz, just searching for a good climb. Three thousand one hundred. Did you climb up, Tim? Yeah, this is Tim. I'm at three thousand one hundred, sitting above the Tromaz. Uh, about ten kilometer wind from the west. How's everyone doing? Reese and I are comfortably established by the Tet de la Strop. How's everyone else? I'll just wait around here for a bit and see who joins us. This climb was really nice and smooth, but it's just suddenly got quite rough. So I put the camera on. guys get here and I can move on the better. Let's go join this guy over here. He's going. I think he's got a smoother climb. Nice. Four meters. 
meters. Chris, this is Tim. Don't be afraid to tuck in quite close to the hill. Okay, this is Tim. I'm going to push on now, leaving the tr leaving the Tromas and Tetras drop. I'm I've got Chris in sight, just to my right. Um, yeah, next up the uh, Dormiers. Up at 3,000 meters, just blatting along the ridge here. <laughs> Don't need to stop for any climbs. Try and find Reese. I've had to do a bit of GoPro surgery. Take the helmet off, unplug the cable, open the battery compartment, take the battery out, reconnect it, and now it's working! Woohoo! I've crossed, I've crossed the first part of the lake. What height do I need to cross the second part? Chris. Tim, I left with about 3,000. So, finally a view of the lake. Look at that. Beautiful. Best to head upwind a bit to your left so that you can then turn into the hill rather than fighting to it. Well, this has been the easiest crossing of the lake I've ever had. Didn't even have to top up at the Morgan. I'm up at 2,800 again. This is Tim. How are you guys doing at the Morgan? Up at 2,900. Base is way higher, so if I can get out to base, we should be easy to be able to cruise across to Orsiers, across the Col. Tim, once you get round the corner there's some good lift and uh, the wind is, is fine, only about 14k. Awesome days flying. 
Um, probably flying for about six hours, including a pee stop in Orsiers. Almost finished packing up. I landed literally just here. And I'm just going to walk over to where Reese is up there. Um, the only slight drama of the day is Steve had a little prang. He landed heavily, got flushed down a valley, landed heavily, and I think he's bust his collarbone. But um, he's okay, and I think he's calling SOS on his inReach again, making the most of that. Um, so yeah, just got to finish doing my packing up and uh, head over to Reese. So at the end of day one, it was pretty obvious that we were going to struggle to stay together during the trip. Rhys and I were camped high above Le Richard. Chris and Feta were lower at Le Richard, where there's a good morning takeoff. Nigel and Ian were above Orsiers. Steve was in Briançon Hospital. And Tony was about to spend an uncomfortable night on a steep slope at the southern end of the Dormeurs Ridge. Rhys and I got our heads down early and I fell asleep wondering what tomorrow would hold in store for the intrepid gumblers. Stay tuned.